Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India NPTEL course environmental chemistry and microbiology. This course will be taught by Professor Shudha Goel and myself, Professor Anjali Pal. We are both from Civil Engineering Department of IIT Kharagpur. We have divided this course into two parts. The first part is environmental chemistry that will be taught by me and the second part is environmental microbiology that will be covered by Professor Shudha Goel. So, in my uh, module 1, I have discussed about the acids, bases and salts. In the second module, I have discussed about chemical equilibrium. In the third module, I have discussed about the chemical kinetics, the order, the rate expression, the um, rate and uh, how to develop the um, rate expression, how to determine the order of a reaction, uh, differential rate loss, integrated rate loss, all those things. And in my uh, fourth module, I am discussing about the chemical kinetics, uh, but I am discussing the other aspects of chemical kinetics. I have discussed about the mechanism, how to develop the mechanism of a reaction and also a catalyst, how the catalysts are uh, working, what are the different types of catalysts, how the, uh, what is the mechanism behind the catalysis, all those things I am discussing. So, this is the um, uh, module, so this is the module 4 and uh, this is the, uh, this is my 20th lecture and it is chemical kinetics uh, catalysis, but this is the part C. Now, um, as I told you that catalysis is very, very important and uh, here in this lecture, I will uh, talk about little bit of uh, research related things, but very, very important uh, for catalysis. Um, I will talk about surfactant, uh, I will tell about the micelles and uh, reverse micelles, then uh, how the catalysis can happen in micellar, micell, uh, micell within the micelle. Then I will tell about the admicel uh, and uh, uh, how uh, admicel can uh, act as a can hold the catalyst and can act the catalysis um, in a favorable way. Uh, and then uh, I will tell about the nanoparticles. Nowadays, very important um, field of research, you know, that nano nano catalyst. So I will cover all those things in this lecture. Now, uh, what is surfactant? Uh, you know surfactant is a very common thing, we every day we use the surfactant uh, in uh, detergents, uh, in uh, toothpaste um, and uh, 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 the speciality about the uh, surfactant is that uh, it has a, a very special chemical uh, structure. Uh, and this uh, surfactant, why it is called surfactant? Because um, it is a uh, surface active agent. So, the whole uh, term is surface active agent which is uh, called in abbreviated uh, way this is surfactant. Okay. So, uh, surface active agent means what? It is reducing the surface tension of water. Surfactant can reduce the surface tension of water. Now, what is the speciality about the surfactant uh, in relation to the chemical structure? The chemical structure is shown here. Uh, for the surfactant, you can see here there is long chain, carbon chain here. There may be 15 carbon or 18 carbon uh, like this. So, it is a long chain, but you can see the two ends. What are the two ends? In the this end, you see it is carbon end. It is carbon end, uh, so it is hydrophobic end. Okay. It is also co called tail, hydrophobic tail. Okay. And the other end, you see it is the 
it is uh, this is written as g so what is g g is uh, some ionic uh, end okay it may be uh, nh3 or nr3 uh, or it may be um, means uh, co minus or it ca can be so3 minus uh, so th this is the ionic uh, this is called head so it is ionic head now uh, uh, so this is the structure now if we represent this as uh, this one so this is the head and this is the tail so uh, the uh, surfactant molecules if you put in water in a small concentration then it will uh, it will be acting as an uh, as an electrolyte okay so uh, it will form some uh, uh, start forming some layer uh, in the interface of uh, water and air but if you increase the concentration uh, and you if you reach the uh, cmc cmc means critical micelle concentration in water say for example i am talking about water then what will happen the surfactant molecules will arrange themselves in some uh, spherical structure okay this is shown in uh, two dimension but actually it is uh, three dimensional structure it is a spherical structure so what is this is called micelle so it happens only above the critical micelle concentration now what is the speciality about it this is uh, dynamic uh, means it is uh, forming and breaking uh, like this um, but it has a in this in this structure you can see here all the carbon ends are here inside the uh, center it is the core it is, it is called hydrophobic core and all the hydrophilic uh, groups end groups that means this group are exposed towards the water this is a water medium okay in water it is present like this okay now here the picture is shown in a bigger way so inside it is the um, hydrophobic core now um, some hydrophobic molecules say for example um, benzene or um, uh, chloroform those types of molecules uh, they are not soluble in water right so if you put uh, a little amount of this type of molecule in water uh, then uh, they will form emulsion so they are not dissolved in water now uh, but uh, they can be dissolved in this core in this hydrophobic core but um, solubilized this is called solubilization okay but if you add too much then it will not be soluble but if it is less amount then it can be solubilized here now this in this core some reaction can occur this is called micellar core so micellar catalysis can happen here so for example there are uh, x and y x and y uh, uh, can react to form the z okay so this can happen here in the micellar core this is called micellar catalysis now entropy factor you may tell that this is a uh, little bit away from this uh, catalysis but you may tell uh, that um, why the micelles are formed because once my we know that um, natural process in the natural process um, always entropy increases but here when the micelle is formed entropy should decrease but um, this is uh, this is opposite to our concept uh, how to explain this because this is uh, you have to think about the whole system okay when the micelles are formed so water structure is breaking water structure is breaking and this uh, so their entropy is increased okay now if you think about the total system maybe in this case entropy is decreased but in the water you know entropy is increased so as a total you have to think and as a total entropy is uh, increased so this is not catalysis related but just i wanted to mention and now this is this is very uh, means um, very interesting topic and many reactions that will not happen in um, homogeneous uh, water or any solvent they can happen here in the micelle okay now this is water medium but say for example similar uh, micelle uh, similar surfactant molecules if you put it in uh, organic solvent but containing little amount of water then what will happen it is just the reverse there it is the organic solvent but little amount of water is present then the reverse micelle will be formed this is the reverse micelle you can see here that um, uh, that the head groups 
because uh, little amount of water is there. So, that will be inside the core okay. and then this head groups you see it is facing towards the water and this is the organic solvent. So, uh, carbon ends uh, because they are hydrophobic. So, it will remain towards the uh, towards the organic solvent because we know um, uh, oh, hydrophobic things like hydrophobic things. So, um, organic solvent is hydrophobic. So, like chloroform, hexane, all those things. So, it will form like this. This is called reverse micelle. Okay. Um, here also, some reaction is possible. Uh, say A plus B uh, gives C. So, this type of reaction can happen here in the um, in the reverse micellar code. Okay. This is also very 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 interesting very very interesting. Now, um, as I told you that um, catalysis when it is uh, uh, heterogeneous catalysis then it is easy to separate the catalyst is easier to separate. Now, uh, considering the similar concept as we have seen in the um, micelle the so micelle how can you separate. Uh, so, once the reaction is happening how can you separate the product how can you separate the micelle or surfactant that is very difficult. Na? So, here you can see we can uh, we can have the similar concept, but we can do it in on solid surface. Then uh, the solid is easier to remove uh, by um, by filtration or something like that uh, or settling. So, uh, so you can see here similar type of thing happening, but it is happening on the Mm, solid surface on the micelle it is happening, but micelle is adsorbed on the solid surface. This type of micelle it is not spherical micelle, but it is um, it is adsorbed on the solid surface that is why it is called add micelle. Add micelle means adsorbed micelle. Okay. So, here you can see that this type of um, uh, the hydrophilic end of the micelle uh, of the surfactant is facing towards the solid surface. This is the surface alumina. Okay. So, alumina alumina depending on the pH z p c what is pH z p c? pH z p c is some characteristic for a um, solid surface um, uh, uh, say for example, it is a pH actually. So, on at pH z p c some solid surface is neutral means uh, charge is 0. Okay. But if you uh, if you change the pH at PC, that means the pH, the solution pH, if you make it lower, means um, if you go to lower pH, then it will become positively charged. The alum, the surface will be positively charged. If you go to a higher value, pH higher value, then the uh, solid surface will be negatively charged. Okay. In al in case of alumina, the pH at PC is 9.1. So, if you make the solution uh, pH below 9.1 say for example, 4 or 5 then alumina will be positively charged and in that case you know the negative surfactant, the negative uh, surfactant it is the sodium dodecyl sulphate SDS which is uh, represented like this. Uh, so, its head group is negatively charged okay. uh, sulphate group okay. negatively charged. So, in that case if the solid surface is positively charged then uh, it will become it will arrange themselves the first layer will be like this then second layer of surfactant will be like this. Okay. So, basically it is micelle type structure, but it is adsorbed on solid surface and because why the SMA it is written because alumina it is modified with SDS that is why sur or surfactant that is why it is called surfactant modified alumina SMA surfactant modified alumina. So, this is nothing but SMA okay. how it is formed alumina you have taken you have added SDS in very high concentration you have made the solution pH around 4.5 much below the pH pH jet piece of alumina then SDS is arranging in this fashion it is a bilayer. Okay. And this range, this this portion is hydrophobic. This portion is hydrophobic. So, and this is uh, because this is head group is negatively charged. So, this is negatively charged. Okay, this you have to remember. 
Now, if you put manganese 2 plus here, this is cation, right? So, cation will be adsorbed in the negative um, head group, okay? And then, so this is the manganese 2 loaded SMA. So, you have loaded manganese 2 on SMA, okay? And now, if you put KMnO4, then it is a uh, redox type reaction Mn2 plus and Mn uh, uh, the 7 plus, okay, 7 plus and 2 plus. So, 2 plus will go to 4 plus and 7 plus will go to 4 plus. That means, it is a redox type reaction and so here you see that M n 2 plus is converted to M n O 2, okay, M n O 2, this red one is M n O 2. So, now you find something, it is actually why I am discussing it because it is a catalyst, okay. So, in the catalyst, it is also M n O 2, M n O x actually, we have told because oxidation state is mixed oxidation state. So, we have written M n O x. So, uh, you have learnt that M n O 2 is a very good catalyst for H 2 2 decomposition, you have learnt it, right. So, here also we will use it as a catalyst. Now, important thing is that because it is negatively charged the head group. So, some it is a dye molecule methylene blue, it is a dye which is positively charged dye, cationic dye. So, is this cationic dye will be adsorbed on this negatively charged head group. So, catalyst is there as well as the dye. So, we will show you how the catalyst can degrade the methylene blue dye here in presence of H2O2. So, so, basically you are preparing a heterogeneous catalyst with M n O 2 or M n O x and you are trying to degrade the methylene blue by using H 2 O 2. So, up to this it is clear to you, I hope because you have uh, everything you have learnt uh, in the last lecture. Okay. So, H 2 O 2 you learnt, heterogeneous surface, heterogeneous catalysis you have learnt and um, M n O 2 you have learnt, everything you have learnt just application now we are applying what you have learnt we are applying that okay now you see up to this you know already that you got some uh, sma mnox this is the catalyst and uh, this is the uh, the dye that is methylene blue it is adsorbed there so both are together both are together so catalyst and the substrate is together okay it is adsorbed here on the same surface it is adsorbed now you are putting H 2 2 and also light, light is very good, light is also uh, good catalyst to decompose H 2 2, right. You have learnt all uh, this thing also. Now, H 2 2 will be decomposed and here in this case, in this case it is not oxygen, but it will be hydroxyl radical. So, this type of degradation is called advanced oxidation pro process or AOP. Okay? So, OH dot is very powerful oxidizing agent and that is coming from the H2O2 uh, with some catalyst it is forming that OH dot. So, when OH dot is produced that will oxidize the uh, methylene blue okay, and some degradation products will be formed. Now, after that what will happen the methylene blue will go out, May not the methylene blue the products will go out. So, now keeping the again free, the catalyst is remaining free okay, for another molecule again of methylene blue to come and react. Okay. So, this is called modified fenton type catalyst because it is why it is called fenton because fenton modified fenton, why it is modified fenton because actual fenton the classical fenton reaction is happening with uh, iron 2 plus and H2O2. Iron 2 plus and H. This is uh, the first it is um, observed by um, Fenton and uh, he did the oxidation of tartaric acid, but, um, uh, but after that uh, long time it this reaction remained unattended. Finally, again from 1960 this Fenton type of reaction is being used for uh, uh, pollutant degradation pollutant like methylene blue is also a pollutant, it is a dye. So, this type of degradation and this is called advanced oxidation process where OH dot radical, it is very powerful oxidant, okay. uh, even much powerful than H2O2 
and it is um, taking uh, means uh, taking its role it is oxidizing oxidant as an oxidant to oxidize the uh, organic pollutant. Now, uh, why it is called fenton? Because in fenton it is Fe 2 plus and H 2 O 2, but it is modified fenton H 2 O 2 is there, but it is another catalyst M N O 2 okay? and it is uh, photo fenton because you are using the visible light also. Now, this is also very important there are two types of mechanism that is um, prescribed for this type of reactions. One is the langmuir hinshelwood mechanism and another is the relay uh, riedel mechanism. So, in this type of heterogeneous catalysis you know one uh, there is substrate and reagent or there are two substrates you can tell once at least one substrate has to be adsorbed on the catalyst surface. Okay at least one it can be two also both may be adsorbed also or one at least should be adsorbed. So, if both are adsorbed both substrates say for example, A and B are reacting. So, both A and B are adsorbed on the catalyst surface then um, then this is called the um, langmuir hinshelwood mechanism. But if one is adsorbed and another is in the liquid phase or gas phase, so it is not adsorbed, but it is coming from the gas phase or liquid phase and reacting and then it is uh, going out. So, it is reacting with the other substrate um, in presence of catalyst and it is going out, then this is the Eliridel mechanism. So, um, these two types of mechanisms are proposed. Okay. Uh, for any catalytic uh, heterogeneous catalysis these two types of mechanisms mostly it, these two types of mechanisms are proposed. Okay. Um, I hope you have understood what are the difference between these two. Anyway, so uh, here so what we have we have seen here that micelle can be used uh, on adsorbed phase uh, to get the catalysis. MnO2 is a very good catalyst or catalysis or MnOx is a good catalysis and uh, this is very easy to separate also the heterogeneous catalysis just by keeping for some time if you keep for some time this is uh, settling down and then you can easily take out uh, the solvent from the upper part okay solvent is water from the upper part okay and also uh, from the mechanism I you have already um, um, I have already discussed about the mechanism. So, once you know to mechanism want to know the mechanism then intermediates or products you have to isolate then only you can speculate the mechanism. So, here uh, it is observed that there are many products where which dot is attached okay. in the substrate which dot is attached. So, that means uh, this reaction is going via which dot generation and um, attack okay. that is uh, that you can speculate, but how the products are identified this is by mass mass analysis. Okay. This also is um, very good tool to tell about the mechanism because you are iso not isolating, but you are detecting actually isolating and detecting the, the uh, products uh, or if you can do the intermediates then it is also uh, good uh, because then you can speculate the intermediate steps also. Okay. So, this is also de dealing with the mechanism. Now, I am going uh, I am going to another uh, very important uh, topic that is nanoparticle. Nanoparticle uh, is uh, also being used nowadays enormously as a catalyst. Okay. So, those who, uh, who are not uh, very much uh, familiar with nanoparticles I can tell you that uh, na particles with uh, 1 to 100 nanometer size at least in one dimension okay, are called nanoparticles. Why I told in one dimension because if say for example, something is um, one uh, where you can think about one where okay. uh, the where say for example, the diameter uh, of that where is say 50 nanometer, but the length of the where may be 1000 nanometer. Okay, then my question is whether it will be called as nanoparticle or not. Yeah, that is why one dimension is coming. So, because one dimension here is that is the diameter is 50 nanometer, 
even if the length is much higher that is uh, uh, 1000 nanometers, it is beyond 1 to 100 nanometer size range, still it will be called a nanoparticle okay? because uh, it is nano wave, it is called nano wave. Now, this is nanometer means 10 to the power minus 9 meter. So, you can understand how small it is. Okay? In recent times, huge number of reports are available where nanoparticles are used as catalyst. Why nanoparticles are uh, so much important as catalyst? Cat as catalyst, okay? So that I will tell. So so applications, some applications of nanoparticles uh, as catalyst. Here you can see the adipic acid, an industrially important compound. Adipic acid um, can be synthesized from cyclohexane by using this cobalt nanoparticle. Okay. Mm, the details I have not given, but mm, but I can tell you that uh, cobalt nanoparticle is acting as a catalyst in this reaction. That cyclohexane, you know, cyclohexane. It you can if you know benzene, then if you remove the double bonds, uh, then it will be cyclohexane. Okay, it is a um, um, cyclic compound, but um, but saturated compound. Okay. So, this, this can be converted to um, adipic acid, which is very much important for uh, preparing you know that um, nylon 66, you know nylon 66 is so much important. So, it can be produced from here, hexamethylene, uh, hexamethylene diamine and adipic acid that condensation reaction that uh, polymer formation. Now, uh, this is nylon 66 polymer. Now, uh, why nanoparticle is so much important because of their small size. Nanoparticles are very uh, interesting properties because of their small size. Okay. Uh, say for example, melting point and these properties, uh, these uh, properties are very different from their from the properties of the bulk materials. Okay. So, what so say for example, melting point of gold. The melting point of gold, bulk gold is this one 1064 degree centigrade, but melting point of gold nanoparticles can be even below 23 degree centigrade. So, nanoparticle has very different properties than the bulk. Okay. Another is the color, gold may have different types of colors when they are nanoparticle. Say for example, it can have purple color, it can have blue color, other different colors similar same is true for silver silver nanoparticles may have different colors. So, they have different colors from the bulk, bulk metal. Okay. Now, nanoparticles have huge surface area. So, they act as a very good catalyst. You know, I have already told you that adsorption is required. So, when surface area is more, then more number of molecules can be adsorbed. So, surface area is very important for catalysis. That is why nanoparticles are uh, very good catalyst. You can see that many, many journals Catalysis journal, uh, journals are dedicated for catalysis or catalyst, very good quality journals they are dedicated for catalysis. So, you know how important now it is uh, to develop some catalysis or to, to do some reaction by using some catalyst, catalyst good catalyst. Okay. Now, uh, when I am talking about the nanoparticles, you can see here that how uh, the volume uh, surface to volume ratio and the surface area how it is related. This is 8 volume means uh, cubes you know it is small cube uh, very small then bigger than this then bigger than this then bigger than this. So, how these uh, properties this, these three properties are changing when you increase the size say for example, this is 2 to the power uh, 3 2, 2 cube 2 cube and then this is 4, then 6, um, then 8 like this, then how the surface area, you can calculate it, surface area. So, there are 6 surface how, uh, surfaces, so you can calculate easily. Then um, volume is this one, surface area is this one, so what is the surface to volume ratio. So, you can see that as the size is increasing, then the uh, surface to volume ratio is decreasing. This is very important term for, for the catalytic property. When surface to volume ratio is high, then catalyst will be better. Okay? It will have better catalytic property. So, smaller, uh, smaller particles are better catalyst. 
like this one, this is better catalyst than this one. If it is the same material, but size only size is varying, then this is better catalyst than this one. Okay. Now, shape, shape matters, shape it is uh, say triangle shape or rod shape or spherical shape. So, shape also is important because uh, here the adsorption and uh, here in the surface the adsorption they may be different. Okay. Um, that is why um, uh, shape uh, depending on shape also catalytic property will vary. Now, crystal facets, what is facets? Flat faces of crystal such these are these they are recognized 1 1 0 1 1 1 etcetera. So, facets also there are some uh, catalysis facet dependent okay, crystal facet dependent catalysis. So, all these to, uh, topics are uh, now very 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 important for nano nano catalyst and uh, very important and uh, upcoming fields. Now, to do this that uh, that uh, uh, nano uh, that uh, MnO 2 that MnO 2 actually was um, uh, the size uh, characterized this nano rods type okay. that is also nano particle that I discussed that SMA surface that MnO 2 that is nano size nano rods. So, this is uh, this is uh, the uh, reference for this and nano particles um, I have not discussed much this is more very general thing I discussed you can get uh, any from anywhere uh, from any book nano related book you can get that. So, I am not um, giving any reference here, this is very general thing I have discussed, but what I wanted to tell in my last uh, lecture that uh, very upcoming fields what are there uh, that uh, for, but it is related to kinetics, it is related to catalyst, it is related to homogeneous heterogeneous catalysis. Um, so, it is very related topics, but very upcoming th things. Okay why it is important the catalyst is so much important you can understand by seeing that those examples. Okay. Now, in this last lecture I have discussed about the catalysis is con in confined environment such as within my cell and reverse my cell and I have also discussed the catalytic properties of nanoparticles um, that depending on the size and shape and facet also. So, all those things are discussed in this lecture, these are very important topic today. So, um, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs>